In this video, we're going to show you how to set up a WordPress multi-site network using a subdomain site structure. To do this, you need to have administration access to your WordPress dashboard, and you also will need to have access to your web server. Uh, you can use SFTP, FTP, SSH, uh, whatever you want, as long as you've got access to change files and the ability to make a subdomain with your web host. So if you've got all of those, we'll get started. So on the screen at the moment, you can see that I've got a WordPress website and it's it's brand new i've just installed it only a few minutes ago so there's really nothing else going on, on this website at the moment and anytime you want to establish a multi-site network it's generally best if you have a fresh site uh, if not make sure you disable all your plugins before you do anything other than that just connect your server and we'll get started so what we want to do first is find wp config and create a duplicate or you know copy it in general just make a backup of that file just in case something goes horribly wrong which is pretty unlikely. Then what we need to do is open WP config itself and then go down to line 83 where we'll see something that's probably familiar where it says that's all stop editing and we need to put in WP allow multi-site and true. So you do that and then hit save and wait for the file to update on your server. Go back into the WordPress dashboard and then hit refresh. Once the page is refreshed you can go to tools on the left hand side and you'll now see network setup. This will bring you through to where you make some important decisions regarding your multi-site network. So just a quick note there, it does say, make sure the Apache mod rewrite and module is enabled. And it's pretty unlikely that you'll be with a web host that doesn't actually have that. So in most cases, you should be fine just to carry on. If it's not working, you'll know about it soon enough. Then we get to choose if we want subdomains or subdirectories. We've already done subdirectories. So in this video, we're going to do subdomains. And then we just go down to the final two details there. And you can see we've got a network title and the network admin email uh, already in there and configured. All it does for the title is appends the word sites onto whatever you've got as your current sites title. And it pulls the uh, admin email directly out of WordPress as the existing administrator email anyway. So when you're happy with those settings, just hit install. This part's pretty straightforward. Uh, you can see we've got some code here on screen and what we first need to do is jump into WP config and just put that below where we have allowed multi-site as true and then save. And we can close that file now. We don't actually need WP config anymore. And then jump back into WordPress. And what you've got now is a number of rewrite rules for HD access, which is uh, an Apache file. So it has to do with the behavior of your web server. So once again, we just edit that file and whatever's in there you can more or less delete that and then paste in the code that WordPress has provided and save. We can close HT Access now. We shouldn't actually need to come back into our FTP client. As you can see it says once you've completed these steps and uh, you just need to log in again. So we're going to do that straight away and probably the first thing you'll notice especially if you've never ever used multi-site before is up in the top admin bar we've got a new option called My Sites. And from here, that's where you go through to access the network admin panel, which is just WP admin slash network instead of strictly WP admin. So we, we'll just go through that now. And you can see we've only got one site and one user. Uh, in terms of learning how to administer a multi-site network, we've already got some videos on that and whether you're using a subdirectory or a subdomain, uh, the approach is still the same for those things except for when you need to add a site. So we're going to show you how to do that now as part of this video. So what you want to do is on the left hand side, click on sites and then add new. And the first thing that you need to do here is put in a site address. So you can choose anything you like. It's entirely up to you. Uh, and then it will be your domain thereafter. So what I might just put in is WPKB, just because that's where we're going to be seeing this video anyway. And then to choose a site title, we'll put multi-site demo, something very straightforward. And as far as an admin email goes, we can just, I'm just going to put in my email address and then hit add site. So as you can see, we've got a new site in the network. WordPress has got the successful message there at the top. If you want, you can go through to visit site, but it won't work straight away. Just a very default message saying that it can't be found. What we need to do now is jump into our web host's control panel. Most will look basically the same as this. It's cPanel fundamentally. 
Uh, and what we need to do here is add in a subdomain. So you can just scroll down to you find domains and then go to subdomains. As you might imagine, we just need to create the subdomain, in this case, WPKB. However, what we do need to do, because it's running on uh, WordPress multi-site, is where it says the document root here, we've got home, our music public HTML, and then it's trying to put it into another folder in the, in the same name of the subdomain. So we just delete that and then hit create. And so as you can see, the subdomain has been created. So what we want to do now is go back and refresh the page that we had open before. And there you go, it works straight away. So this means that the multi-site network is up and running. It's configured. There are no problems. Uh, we are on the subdomain installed website. We can go through to visit the site. We can go to the dashboard. Uh, and that's really all there is to it. It's really, really straightforward. Uh, if you want to do this, you can do it as many times as you like, just so long as you remember to create a subdomain in your web hosting control panel for each site you make. Uh, for that reason, a lot of times, many people choose to go for a subdirectory structure instead, but it really just depends what you want and how you want to achieve it. Which brings us to the end of this video. So if you have any questions about what we've done today or there's something you're not sure of, please feel free to ask in the comments below and uh, we'll try and get back to you as soon as we can.